Bill Gates once held a rather dismissive view of electric trucks, and this perspective appears as outdated as his statement that 640 kilobits of computer RAM is more than enough for everyone. In reality, the electric truck industry is receiving considerable attention and is rapidly evolving with multiple manufacturers. Recently, a new electric truck, the Mercedes E-Actro 600, has emerged as a significant competitor to the Tesla Semi, generating widespread discussions. While the electric vehicle market is highly regarded, there are still concerns that electric trucks produce excessive emissions during the manufacturing process. So, how exactly is the Tesla Semi manufactured? Let's find out in today's episode of Tesla Car World. Welcome back to our channel. Before we begin, please show your support by subscribing if you haven't already and ringing the bell so you won't miss out on any of our interesting videos in the future. Now, let's get started with today's content. The electric vehicle market is experiencing rapid growth with a global scale valued at $388 billion this year and expected to reach $951 billion by 2030. Manufacturers are not only competing with smaller segments, but even electric trucks are seeing substantial investments. If Tesla Semi is being hailed as the top contender to disrupt the trucking industry, it must surpass several other highly regarded rivals like Freightliner Cascadia and Volvo VNR. However, a recent potential competitor that Tesla Semi should consider is the Mercedes e Actro 600. Will the Tesla Semi or the Mercedes e Actro 600 dominate the upcoming trucking market? While the Tesla Semi draws inspiration from Japan's high-speed Shinkansen trains and resembles a bullet, the Mercedes E Actro 600 follows the traditional European truck design with its squared off front end. These distinct designs yield different aerodynamic coefficients. We're informed that the Tesla Semi has a coefficient of 0.4, while the Mercedes E Actro 600 seems to have a lower one at 0.25. However, our focus should be on the key metrics that both electric trucks can offer to determine which one holds greater potential for the future of transportation. For many drivers and commercial companies, Operating range is a top consideration when deciding whether to bring a truck into their fleet. Even though cargo transportation routes may be within a region, they sometimes involve extended journeys lasting many hours spanning over 500 miles. Tesla Semi offers a publicly stated operating range of 500 miles with an 80,000 pound payload. This range can be extended by reducing the payload to 30,000 pounds, allowing for an even greater range of up to 600 miles. In contrast, the Mercedes E Actro 600 has an operating range of 310 miles with an 88,184 pound payload. Similarly to the Tesla truck, this operating range can be extended by reducing the payload to 55,115 pounds, in which case the maximum operating range could hit 350 miles. As mentioned, the Tesla Semi has a maximum payload of 82,000 pounds according to U.S. standards and regulations. However, the e 600 is reported to be capable of carrying up to 88,000 pounds, according to the European market. This is understandable as the weight of the battery is factored into the gross combined weight, which refers to the total combined weight of the entire vehicle, including the tractor, the trailer, and the payload. In reality, the Tesla Semi with its 1,000 kWh battery cannot carry as heavy a payload as the one with a 600 kWh battery. Daimler states that the e 600 is limited to a payload of just over 48,000 pounds according to EU standards, but can carry more in countries where regulations permit it. PepsiCo drivers have confirmed that the Tesla Semi is equipped with a 1,000 kWh battery pack, and earlier Elon Musk stated that it consumes approximately 1.7 kW per mile. According to our research, the new e 600 is fitted with three LFP batteries with a total installed capacity of 621 kilowatt hours and an available power of 590 kilowatt hours. This means that the energy consumption of the Mercedes e 600 is not significantly different from that of the Tesla Semi at around 1.9 kilowatts per mile. In general, both trucks have large battery packs and the capability to transport cargo over long distances. Their energy consumption rates are also quite comparable. All these factors suggest that they have similar energy efficiency when it comes to moving goods. 
Tesla Semi will accept charging rates of up to 750 kilowatts using Tesla's special mega charging system, meaning that the 1000 kilowatt hour battery can be charged from nearly empty to 70% in a half hour and fully charged in an hour and a half. On the other hand, eActro 600's current charging rate is up to 400 kilowatts, but an upcoming upgrade will equip the early models with the ability to charge at 1000 kilowatts once the European megawatt charging system is implemented. Using MCS, Daimler states that the eActro 600 battery can be charged from 20 to 80 percent in 30 minutes. It's important to note that these are manufacturer estimates and that they still await confirmation as they're planned for next year. However, the biggest hurdle for the Mercedes eActro 600 is its significantly higher cost, which is roughly double that of the Tesla Semi. While Tesla Semi is expected to be priced around 150 to 180 grand, its competitor is rumored to be offered at a higher price from 300 to 400 thousand dollars. This price point, in our opinion, is considerably more expensive than many trucks in the market, making it much less accessible for potential customers as it falls outside the budget range for many buyers. Mercedes-Benz's plans to commence large-scale production of the eActro 600 in Germany by late 2024 is certainly a notable development, specifically designed for the European market in Class A truck segments. However, the company may consider entering the North American electric truck market at any point given the current fervor in the EV market. Faced with the rapid growth of the electric truck market, it's evident that the current quality of Tesla semis could easily be surpassed by competitors if the company doesn't remain attentive to this vehicle. Why is the number of Tesla semi currently quite limited? Elon Musk has previously stated that the Tesla aims to produce 50,000 semi-trucks by 2024. However, as of the current moment, Tesla's only produced around 70 heavy-duty trucks. While this number is significantly lower than the stated goal, Tesla does have valid reasons for this. Recently, they announced the official delivery of the Cybertruck by the end of November, and throughout the year, the manufacturer has been incredibly busy with every step of production for this pickup truck. Therefore, the Tesla Semi is not a top priority for production at this stage, and Tesla may not have the capacity and resources to focus on the Semi. If Tesla were to concentrate on producing the Semi at this point, the company wouldn't be able to quickly meet the demands for over 2 million reservations and hundreds of millions of 4680 battery cells. We all know that the Semi is the first Tesla model not aimed at private owners, but rather instead for commercial companies. Therefore, the production quantity of Tesla Semi can't be haphazard, but must be a part of a strategic plan contingent on Tesla's contract with commercial firms. Tesla's undoubtedly negotiated delivery timelines and the number of electric trucks with their partners in the future, but not necessarily at this moment. Unlike smaller Tesla models, the Tesla Semi is the most challenging and complex to produce. While other models have benefited from the Giga Press machine to reduce production time, the Semi is not currently compatible with this pressing machine. As a result, the production process is more costly and takes more time. The Tesla Semi has more components than a Cybertruck, with some parts being two to three times bigger. It requires meticulous assembly, including features like axles, regenerative braking systems, controls that necessitate engineers and machinery to work more efficiently and with greater care. Currently, standard lithium ion battery packs are being used. But this is not the long-term technology Tesla's considering for the Tesla Semi, as it's less efficient and outdated for use in the upcoming electric trucks. Therefore, under the flexibility of the new 4680 battery cell production process at multiple production facilities, with Texas and Nevada being key locations, Tesla is expected to apply these battery cells. Unfortunately, despite producing over 20 million 4680 cells, they're primarily allocated for Cybertruck, so the application of these cells to the Semi may have to wait a while, impacting the quantity of heavy-duty trucks that are produced. Most importantly, the Tesla Semi hasn't been produced in large quantities because it's not yet fully refined. Tesla employee Priestley has acknowledged that the company is collecting data during the testing phase and plans to implement a series of improvement before mass production. Specifically, the sleeper cabin will be added to the Tesla Semi in an upcoming nighttime update. The last factor we think is a significant consideration is production scale. Given the big size of the semi, a facility like that in Nevada might not have the capacity to accommodate both the floor space and production lines that they need. Even though Tesla announced a $3.5 billion investment in the Nevada plan earlier this year, it hasn't yet broken ground, delaying the timeline for that mass production. While we discussed the utility of the Tesla semi in addressing emissions and nicknamed zero emission for this EV in North America, many skeptical views have been raised about the environmentally friendly nature of the production process which doesn't always align with the praised image. 
Specifically, there are concerns that the Tesla Semi emits a significant amount of carbon during the manufacturing stage, particularly regarding its battery packs. Why does the Tesla Semi production process not have as heavy emissions as rumored? Heavy-duty trucks only make up 1% of the total number of vehicles on the road, yet they contribute to 18% of the emissions. After discussing the benefits of Tesla for the air quality in the U.S., many customers have been unwilling to acknowledge these advantages and have shifted their focus to the perceived environmentally unfriendly aspects of the Tesla Semi's production process. We don't deny that the production process of Tesla Semi is not entirely emission-free, but when compared to diesel, it's still considered to be a cleaner and more environmentally friendly option. Specifically, the primary factor that leads to negative perceptions about the Tesla Semi and the production of lithium-ion battery packs. Previously, most lithium was extracted from hard rock mines or underground brine pools, and a massive portion of the energy used for extraction and process came from fossil fuels, and that results in CO2 emissions. Hard rock mining, for instance, for every ton of lithium extracted, about 15 tons of CO2 are released into the atmosphere. The exact amount of CO2 emitted into the long-term production of batteries can vary significantly depending on the materials used, their origin, and the energy sources used in the manufacturing process. Currently, a significant portion of lithium-ion batteries, about 77% of the world's supply, is produced in China, where coal is a primary energy source. According to our research, the carbon emissions for a Tesla Semi from the mining process to being ready for sale before it's even gone a mile are estimated to be around 12 tons of CO2. This estimate includes the carbon emissions associated with the production of raw materials like aluminum, lithium, and copper, as well as the manufacturing of parts, assembly, and the transportation of the trucks. However, it's worth noting that the precise carbon emissions of a particular Tesla can vary depending on factors such as the specific model, the power sources used in the production process, and the locations of manufacturing facilities. Additionally, the carbon emissions of an electric truck like the Tesla Semi over its lifetime are significantly lower than those of a traditional gas-powered vehicle due to the reduced emissions during operation. In this context, one ton of CO2 is equivalent to the emissions produced by a conventional diesel truck driving roughly 2,500 miles, which is approximately the distance from Boston, Massachusetts to Salt Lake City, Utah. We can perform a calculation that a conventional car would need to travel 30,000 miles to admit 12 tons of CO2. And this calculation does not even account for the emissions produced during the manufacturing of a diesel truck, which can significantly differ from the emissions associated with a Tesla Semi. According to our estimates, a diesel truck running for about four months covering a daily distance of 400 miles would emit a total amount of CO2 equivalent to what the Tesla Semi emits during its entire production process. Researchers worldwide are indeed striving to design new production processes or alternative battery chemistries that can work with more readily available and environmentally friendly materials. However, these technologies have not been widely implemented at this time. Yang Xiaohorn, a Chinese-American scholar, professor of mechanical engineering and material science and engineering, and a member of the Research Laboratory of Electronics at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, has stated that despite the environmental impact of lithium-ion battery production, this technology is far more climate-friendly than many of the alternative solutions. In the U.S., the electric grid is considered a mix of fossil fuels and lower carbon energy sources such as wind, solar, hydroelectric, and clean nuclear energy. This mix is generally cleaner in terms of emission compared to burning gasoline, which is why EVs are expected to emit less CO2 than their gasoline counterparts. Shalhorn further explains that the second significant environmental benefit of this type of battery is its potential to stabilize the electrical grid. As the world shifts towards renewable energy sources like solar and wind, the need for storage and energy management becomes crucial. Using batteries to store excess energy from abundant sources like solar and wind can help address a major challenge in renewable energy, balancing supply and demand when weather conditions are less than ideal. This can make the transition from fossil fuels with CO2 emissions to renewable energy sources much more manageable. Tesla is indeed moving towards cleaner lithium extraction from seawater. Extracting lithium from seawater commonly involves a process called evaporation, where seawater is pumped into holding ponds and then exposed to the sun to evaporate. As a result, lithium crystallizes as lithium carbonate salt and is harvested. This cycle appears relatively benign and has less impact on the environment compared to other extraction methods, though it's important to note that it's not entirely without impact. During this process, complete removal of impurities can still lead to pollution if not handled carefully. On the other hand, 
extracting lithium from seawater may consume less energy compared to mining lithium from rock formations. Lithium mining from rock formations often requires disrupting the natural landscape and can have negative effects on the floral and fauna in the area. In contrast, extracting lithium from seawater does not involve the destruction of land or soil cultivation, making it a more environmentally sustainable approach. During the process of extracting lithium from seawater, manufacturers typically consume a relatively small amount of energy compared to the total amount of lithium extracted. In addition to the battery pack, the Tesla Semi has more components compared to other Tesla models, and the production components like chassis, body, and interior accessories results in a very small amount of CO2 emissions, reaching only about 1 to 2 tons in total. Tesla is always focused on improving production efficiency and reducing emissions. Apart from changing the way lithium is sourced, the company places a strong emphasis on using renewable energy sources to power its manufacturing facilities. Specifically, the Gigafactory Nevada uses solar energy to supply 75% of its energy needs, and Gigafactory 3 in China utilizes wind energy to provide 20% of its energy requirements. In addition, Tesla is implementing various improvements to minimize emissions and pollution in the EV production process. These enhancements include a use of recycled materials, waste reduction initiatives, and the adoption of energy-efficient manufacturing technologies. Tesla is actively working to develop new technologies for recycling complex materials like lithium-ion batteries. The company is providing more environmental impact information about its products and is investing in research and development of cleaner electric vehicle manufacturing technologies. In short, the Tesla Semi emits emission during production, but it's negligible and will completely cease to be almost zero upon completion. In contrast, diesel trucks will always emit emissions from the manufacturing process to the operating process until it's retired from use. So, what do you expect from the Tesla Semi in the upcoming updates? And do you think the Tesla Semi or Mercedes e Actro 600 will be the electric truck that changes the game in the transportation industry? We appreciate your thoughts. We hope you'll have the most relaxing feelings after watching this video. If you did, please hit the like button and join the Tesla Car World family by subscribing to our channel. And don't miss out on any of our awesome videos by hitting that bell icon. We value your feedback and your time. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon. Until then, stay safe and have fun.